Let's explore how to name simple carbon compounds using IUPAC nomenclature. Here's the rule. The name can be divided into three parts. You have the prefix, root word, and the suffix. So the prefix is usually a substituent group. So if you have, for example, chlorine as a substituent group attached, then you will start with chloro. If you have bromine, for example, that you have over here, it has bromo. And similarly, you might have iodo or fluoro and other substituent groups, but chloro and bromine, chlorine and bromine are the usual ones. Then you have the root word that completely depends upon the number of carbon atoms that you have. If you have one, then you have meth. If you have two carbon atoms, you will have eth and so on and so forth. And finally, you have a suffix. How do you end the name? Well, it completely depends upon your functional group. If you have, for example, alcohol as a functional group attached, then you end with all, alcohol, all. If you have an aldehyde as a functional group attached, then you have an al, and so on and so forth. If you have no functional groups attached, then if you have a double bond, we'll end with in. If you have a triple bond, you'll end with ein. And if you have nothing attached at all, and you only have single bonds, then you'll end with in. Okay, let's apply this and start naming them. Let's start with this one. Do I see any substituent groups? I don't have chloro, bromine, or iodine, anything attached to it. Can you see that? So there is no prefix for this one. So I directly start with the root word. To figure out what the root word is, I just have to count the number of carbon atoms. Well, I have one, two, three, four, and five. So five carbon atoms. So I know it is pent. So I start with pent. So this is pent. Now, how do I end it? If I had only single bonds, I would have called it as pentane. But notice I have a triple bond over here. So I end with not pentane, but I end with pentine. So this is an alkyne. So this is how you write it. So this is the suffix. Okay, why don't you try this one? All right. The first question I ask is, do I find any substituent groups? I do see bromine. I do see bromo over here. So it starts with bromo. Bromo. And then come to the root word. For the root word, I have to count. We'll have one, two, three. So three is prop. So bromo prop. Now, if I only had single bonds, I'll end up with in. And that's what I have. I don't have any other things. I don't have double bonds, triple bonds. I don't have functional groups. So I'm just gonna end it with in. So bromo propane. Okay, let's move on to the next one and keep pausing and trying on your own before um, I do it. So over here, do I see a prefix? Do I see a chlorine, bromine? Nothing attached, substituent group is not attached. OH is an alcohol, so it's a functional group. You might wonder, how do I know whether it's a functional group or it's a substituent? Like I said, remember, the most common substituents are chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine. Chlorine, bromine being the most common ones. So these are functional groups. And these are the common functional groups. So that's how you can sort of remember them. No prefix, so directly start with the root word. I have one, two, I have two carbon atoms, so I know that this is going to be eth. Now, if there was nothing attached over here, I would have said ethane, but I do have an alcohol attached over here, so it ends with all. So how do I write it, ethol? No, that's not how you write it, I'll show you how to write it. So first you write ethane, then you delete that E, you get rid of that E, and then you write all. That's how you write it. So when you have these functional groups, you end with an in, then you remove the E, and then you attach the, the suffix over here. That's basically how you do it. It'll get more practice over here, okay? And so let's go to this one now. For this one, again, I don't have any prefix, no chlorine, no bromine attached. Directly, let's go to the root word. How many carbon atoms do I see? One, two, three, four. So there are four carbon atoms. So the root word is but. I've written but, but it's but. Now I have C double bond O. Which one is this? It's not al, because C double bond O has to be connected to H for an aldehyde. It's not oic acid. It has to be connected to OH for oic acid. It's ketone, so it's on. How do you write, how do you end this? You don't say butone. Just like what we did over here, you first write butane, delete the E, and then write the own. So butanone, that's how you write this. Okay, let's go to the next one. Again, no substituent groups, no chlorine, bromine, so no prefix. Directly, let's look at the root words. I have two carbons and therefore it's eth, eth. 
What is the functional group? The functional group is a carboxylic acid. Can you see that? It's oic acid. How do you write? It's not ethoic acid. The way you write it is you first write ethane, delete the E, and then write oic acid. That's the step. That's how you do it for all these functional groups. Ethanoic acid. Final one, no prefix. Directly write down the root word. I have only one carbon, so it's meth. And what is the functional group? Well, I have an aldehyde. C double bond O connected to an H, that's an aldehyde, so al. It's not methal, that's not how you write it. How do you write it? Well, you first write methane, delete the E, and then write al. That's it, methanol. So to sum it all up, start with the prefix, then count the number of carbons to find the root word, then you do the suffix. If you don't have the functional groups, the suffix is in, in, or in, depending on the number of bonds. If you do have a functional group, you first write in, then delete the E, and then write either all, al, own, or oic acid.